as our uh, as our nation faces unprecedented financial crisis that threatens to wipe out jobs, investments, businesses, and retirement savings, Connecticut is facing its greatest budget deficit in recent history. Both the nonpartisan Office of Fiscal Analysis and the Office of Policy and Management agree that our FY09 deficit is approximately $300 million and likely to grow to more than $2 billion over the next biennium. At the same time, the wages of working families aren't keeping up with expenses. The rising costs of health care, home heating oil, and gasoline, coupled with our state's high tax rates, have created a perfect storm that many of our neighbors are finding hard to weather. Governor Rell has done her part to protect Connecticut taxpayers by using her executive authority to order more than $137 million in rescissions. And without her leadership, our deficit projections would be even worse. But the governor does not have the power to order enough rescissions to close our growing deficit. It will be up to the legislature to make the tough decisions necessary to balance our budget. That's why we cannot wait a month or even a day to begin collecting facts and working on solutions. A couple of weeks ago, Governor Rell met with legislative leaders and offered to have Secretary Gennario and Commissioner Law brief rele relevant legislative committees and all legislators on the state's budget deficit and overall financial picture. At that time, our budget, projected budget deficit was only $145 million, less than half of what it is today. Uh, and that's why we are here today, and we are happy to have uh, them, as well as the Office of Fiscal Analysis and Office of Legislative Research here to make their presentations. Fundamentally, there are two ways to address a budget deficit, reduce spending or raise taxes. I believe, we believe, as Governor Rell believes, that in this economy, we cannot add to the financial burdens facing individuals, families, businesses, and seniors living on fixed incomes. Our goal must to be to do everything we can to balance this budget without raising taxes. Uh, and that's what this informational hearing is all about. In fiscal nine, our budget deficit projection at this point in time is $292.6 million. As we look at fiscal 10 through 12, the uh, potential deficits become uh, greater. We have about 955.5 million in fiscal 10, about 1.2 billion in fiscal 11, and about 1.3 billion in fiscal 12. What, what is most frightening to me uh, from your presentation uh, is the acknowledgement that historically if we see budget surpluses they tend to grow if we see budget deficits they tend to grow it, it wasn't long ago maybe four weeks ago that we were talking about a hundred and forty five million dollar budget deficit and, and now we have OFA and OPM pretty close to on the same page at a 292 let's round it up 300 million dollar deficit if I were to go out there and say to my colleagues, if I were to say to my colleagues today that we should be prepared for perhaps a $500 million deficit in 09, uh, knowing that you don't have hard, you'll get better data as time goes on, would you say to me, uh, Senator, you're nuts, it's not going to get that high? Or would you say that's a realistic possibility? Well, certainly a possibility, again, if we felt realistically that that was going to be the case at this point in time, we would have reflected that in our estimates as of today. Um, again, uh, given the fact that we will be doing a revised statement for uh, mid-November, we'll have uh, a little bit more passage of time and additional data to uh, 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 come to some conclusion with regard to your point. Again, there is a possibility uh, that, uh, on the other hand, that things could improve. However, given uh, some of the uh, uh, developments on Wall Street and so forth, uh, uh, there is a possibility that uh, the deficit could certainly grow. That, that the $292 million and the $300 million deficit fig figure have not factored in what's happened in our nation's economy or on Wall Street in the last week and a half. I think that's fair to say. I think it's fair to say that uh, if I heard OFA correctly, that neither OFA or OPM 
believe the data that we've used to come up with these projections is reflective of the events of the last uh, 10 days or so. Every 1% of loss in the area of estimates and finals, which encompasses a lot of different things. It's just not capital gains. It's capital gains. It's dividends and interest. It's entrepreneurs. It's bonus payments. Um, everybody who pays their taxes on a quarterly basis as opposed to a withholding basis. Every 1% loss in that area is equal to $30 million. So if we saw a 10% drop in that area, half of what we saw in 2002, less than half of what we saw in 2002, that would equate to another $300 million loss to our general fund beyond what we have projected to date. So we've built a revenue stream where about 40% of families don't pay any revenue on the income tax side. Of those who do pay, about 70,000 people at the very top, <coughs> enough that would fit into Yankee Stadium, pay half the revenue. 70,000 people pay half the revenue. The other 1 million two together pay another half. So when those 70,000 people catch a cold, we go directly into deficit. They have caught a cold. They have caught a very big cold. And when, you, when we say, and I know you don't have more de information on this, the markets are volatile, they're not really volatile. They're steeply down. The S&P is down about 15% for the year. Could that suddenly lurch upward? It could. Does the OLR report about the trend in job growth and the trend in the economy give us optimism that that will happen? I don't think so. There are some that might say, well, of course we're going to deal with this. We have to deal with it, but we're going to elect a new legislature that takes office in January, and just like we typically do, we have a five-month session by Constitution. We'll handle it then. Is that too late? I think to wait until the January session would be to put further burden on the state budget would make it that much more difficult to solve the problems. Thank you. Problems that you put off don't go away. They get worse, and this is no different.